What do TransFat and Thanksgiving have in common? More than you think. I will share the connection and my favorite all-time Thanksgiving recipe. Welcome to Sarah RD TV. Holidays mean cooking with family, right? Today I am introducing my mother in our newest segment on holiday cooking and I want to talk about one of our favorite recipes. Cranberry relish, right? Absolutely. From the raw, from the raw. This is a raw recipe and this is one of those oldie but goodie recipes and all it is, bag of cranberries, fresh or frozen, one to two oranges and she's going to do the, she's going to take out the pits and then we're going to decrease the sugar. The classic had three quarters to a cup of sugar per 12 to 16 ounces of cranberries and I'm going to jazz it up with a little bit of cardamom. And while my mom is <laughs> cutting up the oranges, I want to share a little bit about trans fat and how it is connected to Thanksgiving. Uh, in a word, pies, right? My mom makes an awesome apple pie and what's the main source of fat in your pie crust? Well, it was Crisco, but yeah. now that's not so good from what I understand. <laughs> so Crisco did change, and all shortenings changed their recipes because of the trans fat law um, a couple years ago. So what we know in the medical and science field is that too much is not good. And synthetic trans fat was created back in the 1940s and 50s, post-World War II, and it seemed like a good idea at the time because butter was expensive and we could create longer shelf life. Remember? I'm just kidding. Anyway, so you it was a good idea because, hey, we can have our crackers and cookies and they can last longer and they won't spoil. So that was great. Fast forward 50 years and all the research. Wow, not so awesome for our hearts. So it goes back to single ingredients are always the best. And I know that everybody is thinking, well, that means I'm going to melt a stick of butter and pour it on everything. But most people, we know better than that. It goes back to portions of everything, all of the oils, and with butter, still treat it as a condiment, 100 calories per tablespoon still. So for weight management and heart, and heart health, we want to be more mindful of both. Okay, so back to the recipe. We're going to take all these cranberries, and these are frozen still, so I'm going to add a little bit more water to these. And it is so easy once you get it in the food processor because it does all the work. And you can do this a couple days ahead of time before Thanksgiving. And how are the oranges coming? Pretty good. Pretty good. And we're going to add the juice and the peel as well. You know what? All these are not fitting in at the same time. So I'm going to take some out. So that's half an orange? Ready? Half an orange. Okay. <laughs> so do half an orange. A little bit more. I'm just going to start with half a cup of sugar. And I know it looks like a lot, but when you break this down, there are only 16 calories in a teaspoon of sugar. And then if you only have a tablespoon or two of this on a turkey, it's going to be great. A little bit more? Okay, a little bit more. All right, so we're just going to pulse this and let it go. And that is about it. Okay, so we're gonna take it off. Put it down. Actually, now we have room for the rest of the cranberries because it's still going to be pretty sweet. So just pulse this a little bit more. We're not making a smoothie here, we're making a relish. So we're gonna take it off and put it in our serving dish. And again, I will make this a couple days ahead of Thanksgiving so that you don't have to worry about it on the day. And there's no cooking required, so anybody who is vegetarian, vegan, raw, anything like that, you could also use a little bit of brown sugar or, or coconut sugar, any kind of sugar that you like. It's beautiful, tasty, and only a few calories per tablespoon. Thank you for watching Sarah RDTV. I'd love to hear your ideas about Thanksgiving in your home. Thank you.